Howdy again, it's Tubal Kane, and I'm continuing with this series that I'm making on the 12 inch Atlas Craftsman uh, bench lathe, floor model lathe. And in the previous videos, I showed you how to set the change gears for uh, uh, different numbers of threads per inch when we were doing threading. But in this one, I'd like to show you how to set the change gears such that the uh, longitudinal feed and cross feed for that matter will be much much slower in order to give you a good uh, surface finish and uh, when you're just doing regular machining rather than threading. Now as you know the half knot lever or the threading lever is used for longitudinal feed as well as it is threading but in turning the lathe on and uh, this is uh, in direct drive, not back here, so we, this is a good speed for turning, but you can see the lead stroke is turning way too fast, therefore the carriage is moving way too fast in order to get a good finish. In fact, it's still set on 20 threads per inch. So let's get into the uh, change gears again and show you how we're going to change them for uh, turning. If you have not watched the previous videos where I showed you how to change the gears in regards to threading, be sure and go back and look at those. And uh, I'm going to take the quadrant or the banjo off to the bench like I did uh, in the previous videos. And using the uh, chart here, and I have another chart on the bench which is exactly the same, show you how to rearrange the gears such that we get the, the very slowest feed. So let's take a look at the chart. I took the gear cover off the lathe and I'm going to use that just to show you that it's just as valid as what's in the book. But if you look near the bottom of the chart, all we're interested in is the portion down here below my pointer and you can see where it says feed per revolution of spindle. And that is all that we're interested in. Right here. And in fact, there are five different uh, feed rates shown here and now what that means is that for instance uh, 0 0.0024 the carriage will advance or the tool will advance into the work two and a half thousandths approximately 0 0.0024 is uh, about two and a half thousandths and that's the finest one and sometimes that's not even fine enough and in fact later on when we use uh, the quick change gearbox, you're going to see that the chart on there shows that the very finest feed is four thousandths, and that's hard to deal with, and I'll talk about that later on. But this is a pretty good feed, and that, in fact, is probably the feed that you will want 98% of the time when you're using this lathe, because you do not want to change these gears any more than necessary, because it's just uh, cumbersome and labor-intensive and uh, we are always in a hurry, aren't we? So that's what we're going to look at right there, the top one. Looking at the chart now, you're going to find that none of the pictures over here off to the side concern what we're doing, but there is a picture in the book which I will show you momentarily. And in setting up here for the feed per revolution, I'm laying a file there as a straight edge. You will see that uh, we are going to uh, use a 64 tooth gear on the end of the lead screw and then in the D position we're using a 20 and a 56 in the C position a 52 and a 20 and in the A position a 36 and a 64 and then finally out here to the uh, end uh, we're going to use a 16 for the uh, spindle stud gear and that's that duplex gear near the top so those are the gears we're going to use. Now I'm looking in the Atlas book, and there's a Craftsman book that's similar, but uh, read the text here, and this is the gear train again for 0 .0024 uh, inch of carriage feed, and it's referring to the picture on the next page, which is right here. So this is the pictorial layout of the gears that we need to set up. And we'll do that right now after I bring the banjo over to the bench. The very first thing I'm going to do is remove all the gears from the banjo because none of these are going to be uh, usable 
uh, for this application. In fact, some of these gears that are that are doubled up like this have to be uh, separated, and then I'll lay out the gears as I am going to install them, and they'll come off easily enough. I don't know if you've watched this other uh, video or not, but uh, I go through that in detail on the other one. So let me strip all of these off and uh, show you how we're going to do it. I have already mounted the 64 tooth gear right here on the screw. Remember this is the lead screw on the other end of this gear and then we need uh, a spacer and the washer and the nut. And I'll wait till later and tighten these all up at once. Now remember there are positions over here and I mentioned that in the other video but this is position A, position B, C, and D. And the chart makes reference to those positions. In position D, in this slot, I'm going to put a combination 56 and 20 tooth. And I've already assembled those, and this bushing needs to go in there. You may have to take that off one of the other gears. Now, all of the the gears are numbered and you can find the numbers on them if they're not uh, too dirty and if you can't find the numbers uh, you can count the teeth. Put a, a black mark on one and count clear around and do it twice. And using a T-bolt from the bottom this gear is going to go on like that with the small gear, the 20, meshing with this larger gear. And of course a nut and washer. Next in position C I have a 20 and a 52 and they may be uh, assembled like this and you have to have that bushing just like that and we call it a compound gear when they're together and uh, then this gear is going to go on like well where's my other need one of these a little oil on here. I'm not doing much of that now because of the mess. And then I need a bolt coming up uh, from the bottom here. Bring that in. A nut and a washer. And that position is completed. Now I talked in the other video about spacing the gears as far as the working uh, depth of the gears. So don't jam them together. And the, the book shows us, take a piece of paper, not too thick, not too thin, and bring them together. Tighten the two of them and that gives you the correct working depth. And then spin them to make sure they're spin, they spin free and there's no tight spots. And last but not least, in position A is the combination here of a 64, that's the large one, and 36 tooth for the small one. And you can see this is getting pretty messy and also uh, it helps you realize why there are so many gears in a complete set uh, of change gears. And if you're missing just one, you're in trouble. Again, there's a bushing or bearing here. And I am using all the spare parts for this one. So just about everything I've got other than the excess gear are being utilized for this setup. Snug that up and it's meshing down in here, not right here. And those gears just barely clear one another. Snug that up just a little bit. There's a burr on that thread. I've struggled with this for three days. We'll oil those after they're on the machine. But we got uh, we got so many gears here that it, quite a bit of force is necessary to turn them. But that's what it looks like. Or turn it here. Okay, I'm going to check the clearance and uh, double check now everything that it is according to the chart, or you just have to stop and redo it. So double check. I want to show you something else in the book. There are many, many pages in this book devoted to changing these gears. It's probably the largest single section in the book. So look it over. 
But uh, for those of you who are not familiar with drafting and drawing and blueprints and so on, remember that dotted lines mean hidden lines. So in the last gear that I put on here, the combination of 64 and 36, you can see that the 36 tooth here is the one that's a dotted line, and that means that it's the gear that's on the inside, it's literally hidden. Similarly, uh, on other drawings here, you'll see that if you look at this, that the small gear also is a dotted line. So those are hidden lines and that little gear is on the inside. So take note of that when you use these charts. I have mounted the banjo back on the machine and be sure and unplug your machine or disconnect the power when you work on the gears. Do not take chances. I know two men that look like this. One's my neighbor and another man that was long dead. So don't be one of them. Oh, and my math teacher in high school, his name also was Peterson. And it was Lee Peterson, but all the kids called him Stubby Lee because of that. Okay, uh, with that in mind, using the wrench here, I have brought this tooth, or this gear, up to the small duplex gear here. Remember, that's the 16. We haven't used that so far. We've been using the other one in the back. But bring that up and check the mesh. I'm going to do. I'm going to check the mesh with paper off hand, off camera. But now, when I turn the uh, pulley here by hand, notice how slowly this gear is turning. And that is the gear that's on the lead screw. Therefore, I assure you the lead screw is going to move very slowly, meaning that we will get a very fine feed. So that's the setup, and that may be even the default setup for many of you that don't do much threading. You may set this up and keep it that way for years, unless you find that to be a little bit too uh, uh, slow of a feed, but it's better to have it slow with a good finish than too fast, but that's of course a personal personal opinion, but you have five speeds uh, to select there in the, at the bottom of the chart, so remember that, but I'm not going to show you all of those, I'm just going to show you this one. And now I'm going to step over to the front of the lathe and show you what uh, this looks like in terms of the longitudinal feed. Before I move around to the front, I think I'll just show you this. I'm going to break one of my cardinal rules. I am going to turn the lathe on without the guards closed, but I'm nowhere near it. There's no rags, there's no chips, there's no nothing near it. And uh, show you how to oil it. And uh, notice how slowly they, uh, t they turn right now. Down here, very, very slowly. Now there's a, a lot of gear noise because I'm employing an awful lot of gears here. When you look at it, we got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gears that are turning. To oil the gears, again I, I use a gear lubricant, but a regular a thick oil is going to do too. And you can literally squirt some of this on here as the machine is running, but I do not recommend it. So I'm going to put it on with a brush. Coca-Cola? No. Gear oil. I always like the smell of that. And this can be brushed on. And it tends to spread from one gear to the other. And get your brush in there, but it's if it does, the brush can be sacrificial. And that pretty much covers all the gears. And that oil will spread. Now turning the lathe on, you're going to see how slowly the feed, or the, the carriage moves with this uh, feed. Remember, it's about two and a half thousand. It's even going to be harder to match the gears here because the leaves are turning so slowly. Also notice that, as I had mentioned before, sometimes the carriage will move the opposite direction of what you expect. Even though from the last video when I was threading it was going 
in this direction, I will now have to move the feed reverse lever to the down position. And be sure and turn the machine off when you do that. But in the down position now, you're going to see that not quite in. But the carriage is now moving as soon as the backlash is taken up. Toward the headstock at a very slow rate. Now let's put the dial indicator on there and see if we're truly getting that two and a half thousandths that I talked about. As I said in the other video, the proof is in the pudding, and I've got a dial indicator here up against the uh, carriage, and as I rotate the uh, chuck exactly one revolution, I'm going to get two and a half thousandths, or thereabouts, right there, and the half nut lever is already engaged, and I have removed the backlash, and I'll do this twice now, but watch the chuck here, and we're on zero. There's a revolution, about a revolution, as close as I can get without a, putting a pointer on there. And there you can see how far the carriage has moved. Two and a half thousandths, but actually it should be uh, .0024, so pretty darn good. And let me go another revolution, and then it should be about on the five. And there's another revolution. Okay, so that shows you that, that the gear train is set up properly and accurately according to the chart, and I did not err. But double check yourself and put uh, oil on everything as you assemble it. Make sure there's no chips in the gears. And if your gears have been used for years, clean them with solvent and uh, your wife's toothbrush to get them good and clean. You may find it interesting to note that on uh, this atlas lathe, the cross feed uh, is the same as the longitudinal feed, and I'll explain that better in just a second here, but you can see that I've turned the compound uh, around and I've got uh, the indicator mounted here and zeroed out, and as I turn the uh, chuck again by hand, just one full revolution, you're going to see that it also moves two and a half thousandths. And there we are. I want to show you the other two lathes and what, what uh, reference they make on them. This is my Logan lathe, and take a look what it says on the tag right here. It's sideways, but right there it says that automatic cross feed is 0.25 times longitudinal feed. And similarly, here on my uh, South Bend uh, Heavy 10, on the quick change gearbox, and again, they put it sideways because there's just uh, no room for it on there. There's a lot of information on that tag, but it clearly says that the power cross feed is 0.375 times the longitudinal feed. So you really got to do a little math to determine what the feed rate is on these two lathes in regards to the cross feed, where the atlas is uh, the same for longitudinal and cross feed. Now back to the atlas. And there it is, taking a cut on aluminum, producing a nice finish. And a very slow feed of two and a half thousand for revolution. This is Kubel Kane saying so long for now and be sure and watch the next videos in this series.